95.5 City, what is going on? Pastor Irene here. So excited that you're here with us for the message and the word today. We've got an incredible, incredible speaker for you lined up today, Pastor Larry Mack, our very own Pastor Larry Mack. He's a son of this house. Pastor Jimmy and I love him and his wife, Amanda, and they're two amazing boys. And he is a student of God's word, an incredible communicator. And I want you to lean in, grab your notebooks, pull out your Bible and enjoy the message today. Wherever you are, just put your hands together with me and welcome Pastor Larry Mack. Hey, I-5 City, welcome back to our Heart and Soul series where we are discussing the heartbeat of I-5 City and how we all can come together and get our hearts and souls in line with the vision of I-5 City. I am so blessed and honored to be here with you today. I thank you all in the studio audience for being here. Those of you watching online on our online experience, thank you so much for being here with us. Matter of fact, we want to connect with you. We want to know who you are. I want you right now in the chat to shout out where you're watching from, what city you're watching from, what neighborhood. If you're not from the U.S., shout your country out. We want to know who's watching with us. But look, today I want to shout out somebody extremely special, some people who are, who are, are super special in my life, and that's our lead pastors, Pastors Jimmy and Irene Rollins. And I want to send a huge thank you to them, not just for me personally, but for, for being committed to the vision that God gave you, for not shrinking back from a vision that, that seems outlandish, but for, for going forward, for staying the course, and for allowing us to have a space where we can work out our purpose, God's plan for our lives, the gifts that God has placed in us, and we can use them to benefit his kingdom. It is because of your vision. So I thank you, Pastor Jimmy and Irene. And I also thank you just for the opportunity to have this platform today, to be able to stand here and present the word of God. Well, I'm excited today. I also want to shout out our staff and our, our, our team, our pastors here at I-5. I love being on this team, being able to, to shape and, and strategize and structure put structure behind the vision to make sure this thing happens. And of course, I would be a, a, a terrible person if I didn't mention our volunteers, our teams, those who make it happen. We've given out over 3,000 pounds of food this season so far during the pandemic. We have fed and clothed and showered the homeless. Uh, uh, we have fed those students who have been out of school during the pandemic. There's been so much that has happened. It is only because of you, our volunteers. So I thank you. Give yourself a little pat on the back because God is pleased with what you have accomplished so far. He has so much more for us to do. And that's kind of where I went ahead today. So if you're ready... If you're ready, I want you to say, I'm ready, because we're about to jump into the Word of God. Let's turn to the book of Romans, chapter 12, starting with verse 2. Paul says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect because, the privilege, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give you this warning. And so when Paul says, I'm giving you a warning, that means you need to pay attention to wherever you are. If you're in your car, you might need to pull over right now because Paul has a warning for you. He says, don't think you are better than you really are. I could stop right there. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Who can... Think of somebody in their lives who might need to reevaluate themselves to take an honest assessment of who they are. We all need this. I think right now in this season, we need to be able to, to take into account who we are and measure ourselves and not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. It says, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, Speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If, you get, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. 
If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. I want to pray for you uh, before we go any further today. Lord, we thank you so much, God, that you can transform us. You can change us. You can shift our minds, our hearts, our souls. You can mold us into the men and women of God that we were created to be. I thank you, God, that you have given us gifts, that you have given us abilities, that, that, that you have called us, Lord God. Despite our inadequacy and imperfection, you have still chosen to use us for the glory of your kingdom, to bring glory to your name. And so we are coming to you today with gratitude. And we are asking you, Lord God, to help us to work out those gifts. Help us, Lord God, as you transform our minds. Help us to become committed followers so that we can represent you well in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look, I want to talk to you guys real quick about uh, a time when I was a kid. Uh, the year is 1993. It's a lot of incredible things happening. This is an incredible uh, time for hip-hop. You know, Wu-Tang is coming out. You know, Biggie is coming out. You know, Nas's album is popping. It's an incredible year. But this, this year in particular, I remember the beginning of the school year. I was in the third grade. And I'm walking through the hallways of Sinclair Lane Elementary School in Baltimore City. And everybody coming up and down the halls is, is talking about this new show. And they're doing karate chops and kicks. And, and I'm like, what is going on? And when I went home, and turn on my television, I found out about a new show called The Power Rangers. Anybody remember this show? Come on, put a put a put a, 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 a emoji, some emoji, a, a, a fire emoji or, or a fist emoji. If you remember The Power Rangers. I remember when this came out, it was a show about this group of teenagers who were chosen to be the protectors of the planet Earth. It was... Uh, uh, they became superheroes, right? They had different kinds of, of, of uh, abilities and different kinds of characteristics that made them unique. They had different uniforms, red, black, blue, pink, and, and yellow, and they were chosen by Zordon, who was their guide, their leader, to be protectors. But he gave them this ability that when they said these three words, something incredible happened they would shift into these super powerful heroes and they would say it, it's morphing time. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember it's morphing time? Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, Tyrannosaurus. They were super heroes when they shouted these words, but it didn't start that way. When Zordon first called them, he called them as youth, as those who were inexperienced. He said, I don't care that they're young. I don't care that they're inexperienced. I have something incredible for their lives. Zordon, he tells Alpha 5, his assistant, he says, Alpha, I need you to teleport to me five human beings who are over-emotional and overbearing. Zordon said, despite their weaknesses, despite their imperfections, I still have a call on their lives. I still have a purpose for them. Not only that, but these five teenagers, when they were called and when Zordon told them the incredible mission, he spoke and prophesied over their lives. He told them about who they were and the gifts that, that, that were in them. And he said, I want to use you to protect the planet Earth. And you know what those five teenagers did? They rejected the call. They didn't understand what he was talking about. They were afraid of, 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 of having that kind of weight on themselves. They were just teenagers. But you know what? Zordon knew. He knew he could transform these young people into something powerful. And so he never retracted the call he made on their lives. He knew if they would only trust him, if they would only give him access to their lives, that he could transform them. It's morphing time. And now when we think about what Paul is preaching, what Paul is teaching us rather in the book of Romans chapter 12, he's communicating that God is not just interested in changing us for the sake of us simply becoming different. He is teaching us that God actually has a motive for our metamorphosis. He is showing us, he is painting a picture of what it looks like for us to be remade for a radical mission. 
God has something for us to accomplish. He starts by urging the church to allow God to change the way our minds work, to change the way we think. Some translations say to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And what I'm here to tell you is that this is not just a mere adjustment of our thought processes. It is a full transformation of our hearts and soul. The renewing of our mind is oftentimes associated with self-improvement, with becoming better people, right? It's not just about a transformation that makes us holy. It is also about a transformation that activates us. It's not just that we would stop sinning, but it is to equip us to start serving others. You see, in the verses four down through eight, Paul starts to talk about us being a part of one body. He talks about us having several gifts and different ways that we can be used to serve others. God has called us as we are in the state we are in with all our imperfections, with all our inadequacies, with all the, um, the overbearing uh, uh, characteristics in our nature. And he's called us not just as individuals, but as a body, as a unit, as a team to impact the entire world for his glory. So what does it look like? What does it mean to have a renewed mind? What does it look like for God to change the way that we think? What is the process for our hearts and souls to be equipped to facilitate the call of God to serve. It's morphing time. You see, before we can go into this state of uh, metamorphosis, is the way I'll put it today, is we first have to have a commission. Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 through 8. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's about to send them out. But before he sends them, he says this, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. I'll I'll put it this way. A mission without a commission is powerless. Jesus says, Give as freely as you have received. The first thing we need to realize about commission is that our transformation, our metamorphosis begins when we are compelled by God. This is why an an active relationship with God is so important. This is why a a, a healthy uh, communion with the word of God is important. This is why being on online church every week is important. It puts us in a position, it puts us in an atmosphere where we can hear from God, where we can respond to the call of God. But when Jesus says, give as freely as you have received, what is he talking about? What are they given and what have they received? What I believe he's talking about is power. You see, a commission is not only the assignment of the task, it is access to power. When God commissions us, when God uh, 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 sends us out, he doesn't just send us empty handed. He sends us with power to execute the call that he has on our lives. When, when, When Jesus gives his disciples access to this power, the power is only activated in the context of serving others. We are only as powerful as believers. We are only as powerful as our willingness to answer the call to serve others. We want power to overcome our our sins and we want the endurance to overcome and we want the power to be courageous and to face our fears and to go into uncharted territory. We want the power to find success. We want the power to be able to achieve the things in our own lives that we want, the the visions and dreams that we had. But God is saying, you are only going to have access to my power when you are willing to give it freely in serving others. I want to put it this way. This is where, well, Paul says it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Some of y'all are not going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. He says, they will act religious. 2 Timothy 3, 5. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Then he says, 
stay away from people like that. I don't want us to be distant. I don't want us to be disconnected because you or I have decided to reject the call. You or I have decided that serving others isn't important to us. And so we have, have, have released ourselves from the access to the power that God so freely and so readily gives to those who are his followers. We have to be commissioned. But a commission without compassion will cause you to burn out. You will not last. We must have compassion. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, it says this about Jesus. He says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You see, when we are transformed, when we morph, we not only gain access to power, we also gain access to perspective. Jesus never grew weary in his work. Why? Because he had a perspective. He could see the issue. He, 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 could, uh, 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 he had a perspective that, that gave him insight into what was really going on. He saw sheep without a shepherd. He didn't just see a group of people. He saw what he was called to impact. You see, every week we have a team of people. Even right now, while you're watching this video, there's a group of people who are outside, who are serving the least of these, who are feeding those who are hungry, who are giving showers to those who are without, who are praying with and for people in the community, literally right now. Why? How can they commit to something like that? How can they put themselves out there during a pandemic? What drives them to be in that position? It is because they have a perspective. Our team who is out there who are serving the homeless, they have a perspective. They have an insight that moves them. You see, I don't believe that people who don't serve are just selfish. I believe that all of us have compassion somewhere in us, but we just haven't had the opportunity to have the perspective that would activate that compassion. Put 20 people in this room right now with a large bucket of water in each of their hands and send a man in this room who is burning on fire, I believe, apart from some mental illness or emotional uh, uh, imbalance, I believe all 20 people would throw that bucket of water on that man. Why? It's because they can see the issue, they understand they have access to power, and that, 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 that perspective gives them the fuel and the motivation to act on the gift that God has placed in their hands. Compassion is not a trait that needs to be learned. It is a characteristic that is activated when we can see people suffering, when we can understand that we are equipped with the power to move on their behalf. Now, it's great to have a commission. It's great to have compassion, but compassion without a commitment is aimless. We have to have aim. We have to have a, a focal point. Luke chapter 9 verse 62 says, but Jesus told him, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. You see, Jesus is not looking for people who are just willing or people who are able. He's looking for people who are committed. It seems kind of harsh, Jesus. I mean, a little glance back, I got the plow, I'm here, my hands are on it, I'm walking with it, I can't just take a glance back, I can't just look back for a second, I can't just reminisce a little bit, I can't just have a little bit of doubt, I can't second guess myself a little bit, second guess my commitment, I can't, just a little bit, Jesus, I'm unfit, unqualified for the kingdom just for a glance. Here's what I understand about this illustration. You see, this plow is not a machine like we use today, like we see when we pass by in a rural area. We'll see a plow, a machine just kind of plowing the land. This is a traditional plow. A plow that is not just a piece of equipment, but it is attached to 1,500 pounds of oxen on the right, 1,500 pounds of oxen on the left, and this little 180 to 220 pound person guiding this power, 3,000 pounds of power. One glance back and you don't know what those ox will do. Jesus is saying we have to have a focus. There is 2,000 500 to 3,000 pounds of gifts that you are entrusted to guide. 
There's 3,000 pounds of grace that God has given you, 3,000 pounds of mercy that God has placed in your care. And he's saying, you don't have time to look back. That's a lot of power. And when I watch these videos of these men and women who are guiding these plows, they not only had a plow, they had a stick in their hand because they had to guide these large animals as to which way they would go with this plow. You see, when the Power Rangers, when they finally accepted the call, they couldn't go back to being normal teenagers. They couldn't go back to being just high school kids. They had committed to something far greater. They understood that there was a level of power that they had been given access to, that they had been exposed to, that had to be guided properly in order to accomplish what the great guide had commissioned them to do. Jesus is calling for a church that is not just going to show up, but a church that would be committed, a church that he can trust with 3,000 pounds of power of giftings, a church that won't lose focus, but will stay the course. It's morphing time. Anybody ready to change? Anybody ready to transform? Anybody ready to become a committed follower of Jesus, committed to serving others? Commitment is great, but a commitment without connection is insufficient. It's not enough. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 12, 18 to 22. He says, but our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. Here's what I want to say, and I want to, I, I want to be super intentional right now because there's somebody out there that's listening to this message and you have felt like you are in, in, in inadequate, that, that you are unwanted, that, that you don't have purpose. You've been questioning your worth and your value because of the words of others or because of the contrary voice that is speaking inside of your head. And I'm here to declare to you today that you are necessary. You are needed. God designed the church to be one body, but many parts. And you are a part of that body. If you are an I-5, our, our, our church doesn't function properly to its fullest potential without you. There is a call of God on this church, and it includes every member of the body. You see, one of the things that I feel like... Uh, our people are going through right now. When I say our people, I mean the church at large, many, because we're in this pandemic and, and we're not able to go to church in person. And a lot of people, and I hear it all the time, I just don't feel connected. I just don't feel connected. And I wonder if we're more concerned with or, or if we miss being connected with our friends or those that we associated with more than we are connected to our call to serve others. When we say, I don't feel connected, are we saying that we're not connected to something that gives us, that serves us? Or are we saying we miss being connected to the opportunity to serve others? You see, being connected to a church is not about finding commonality. It's about being connected to common calling. One more time, it's not about commonality. It's about common calling. You see, in today's culture, in today's climate, there's racial discord, there's political discord, and everyone wants to run to their corner. Everyone wants to find the people that thinks like them. Everybody wants to find the group that, that is in the same tax bracket as they are. Everybody wants to be connected with those who are in their age group and stay in their corners. It's us against them, but the body of Christ cannot work together like this. Paul says the 
I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And I believe that the young person can't say to the older person, I don't need you. I believe that the white man cannot say to the Hispanic woman, I don't need you. I'm here to tell you that the Republican cannot say to the Democrat or the Democrat to the Republican, I don't need you. If you are a part of the body of Christ, you have been called to serve others. You have been called to me. I have been called to you. And God God has something for us to accomplish is morphing time. We're connected, not because we agree, but because we are here to accomplish something. When I think about being connected, the, the greatest illustration of connection, to, in my opinion, is marriage. And when I think about marriage, when I'm asked, you know, people, young, young people ask me, so how do you know when she's the one. How do you know that he's the one? Here's how you know. When you contribute and complement their purpose and they contribute to and complement your purpose. Because when you come into a marriage, you're not coming into a romantic relationship for comfort and for, for fuzzy feelings. You're coming into a covenant relationship for the sake of purpose. You and your spouse, this is for somebody who's married out there or somebody who's thinking about getting married. You are not called to your spouse for your comfort or for theirs. You are called to your spouse into covenant for a purpose. You are called by God to accomplish something together. That's what being connected is all about. That's what the Power Rangers represent. They represent connection. The Power Rangers were at their greatest state of power when they would harness their dinosaur power, their dinosaur trait. Each one of them had a dinosaur, mastodon, pterodactyl, triceratops, saber-tooth tiger, tyrannosaurus, each with their own unique gifts, their own unique strength. One could fly, some had tusks, some had large teeth and were tall, but they were their most powerful when they came together into something called the Megazord. If you know about the Megazord, the Megazord was a super robot. It was a, co a collection of, of all their strengths and they would be formed this great, incredible robot able to face any foe, any evil force in the universe. And God is calling us to be like that, to take our unique gifts, to take our unique characteristics and traits and bring them together, our unique ways of thinking, our different ages, our different uh, cultural expressions, and to bring them together to accomplish something great for the kingdom of God. And that's serving others. It's morphing time. We have to be commissioned by God. We have to meet that commission with a compassion based on what God is showing us in reference to our calling to serve others. And that compassion, that compassion has to be met with a commitment, a commitment that isn't wavering, that doesn't look back, that doesn't question, but is committed to moving forward. And that commitment has to be in the context of being connected on a team in a family. That's why Pastor Jimmy preached, no groups, no glory. The glory of God is exercised, is facilitated in the context of a group of people. I believe that if God had an Alpha 5 like Zordon did, he would say, Alpha I want you to send me some human beings, some human beings who are confused about who they are, some human beings who are unsure in their faith, some, some human beings whose, whose minds are cluttered and conflicted and they, they, they don't have any direction. They haven't been sent. I want you to bring them to me and I'm going to take them from being conflicted to commissioned. I have a word for their lives. I believe if God had an Alpha 5, he would say, Alpha, I want you to send me some people who have been scarred up. Who have, who have been desensitized because of what they've been through, who have become indifferent, who have, who, 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 have, who, who have become blind to be able to see what it is that God wants them to see. I want you to bring them to me and I'm going to transform their callous heart into a heart of compassion. It's morphing time. God is saying, he would say, Alpha 5, I want you to send me some people who want to keep it safe. Some people who like to stay in a familiar place. Some people who are afraid to come out of their shell. They, they're 
they're, they're afraid and uncomfortable with loving beyond their preferences. They're afraid or uncomfortable with living beyond themselves. And I'm going to change them from being comfortable to being committed. God is saying, Alpha 5, I want you to send me those who are hidden, those who have been siloed, those who have been gripped by fear. They're unable to come out. They have been concealed. They are inconspicuous. They are tucked away. And I'm calling them out from being concealed to being connected. It's morphing time. God is calling you. God is putting a heart of compassion in you. God is giving you the mechanisms in your mind, in your heart, in your soul to be committed. And he is placing you amongst a people, a church that you can be connected to and activated for purpose in serving others. You see, this concept, this idea of being renewed and being transformed of metamorphosis has been demonstrated to us by Jesus. It's not something that, that, that Paul is just calling us to do blindly, without a model. It says, he says this in Philippians chapter two, in verse three, he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourself not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset, well, listen, listen, have the same mindset, renewing of your mind, as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. How? By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. This is the model, folks. This is the template for what it looks like to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This is what if morphin time looks like for the body of Christ. See, when I think about the Power Rangers, the reason why eight-year-old Larry Mack was enamored was because it looked cool. I wanted to be the Black Ranger. I wanted that uniform, that helmet. I wanted to be able to do hip hop keto like Zach. I wanted to be able to pop lock, break dance, and do karate at the same time. It was glamorous. It was shiny. It looked powerful. But God is showing us here that our metamorphosis, our morphing time looks a little bit different. Saying Jesus took on the nature of those that he would serve. And God is saying, he, is, he wants to show you. He wants to give you a glimpse. He wants to give you a perspective of those you're serving so that when you are transformed, when he changes your mind, that you will come from a place of comfort, from a place of callous to a place of humility. That's what God is calling on. A church that he is commissioning, that he is giving compassion to that is calling to be committed and connected. We are coming with humility of our hearts. Why? Because that's the way Jesus came to us. God said, Jesus, my son, it's morphing time. I need you to get up off this throne. I need you to go to earth. I need you to be formed in fashion like a servant in human likeness. And I want you to serve them. And God is saying, I need you to get off your couch I need you to get out of the house, get out of your comfortable place. I need you to get out of your circle, your people who think politically like you or your people who think culturally like you. And I need you to go to a people that I'm calling you to serve. I'm calling you to serve the least of these. I'm calling you to serve those who are different. I'm calling you to serve those who sin differently than you. I'm calling you to serve those who don't understand like you understand. Humble yourself because there's power that I have that I'm giving you access to, that I'm calling you to execute. I am humbled by this message and by this concept. I'm humbled. It's it's a difficult thing. And I believe that there's some listening today who may say, you know what? I've been been distant from God. Uh, I've been turning a blind eye. To the problems and the ills of the world. I, I haven't been committed. I've claimed commitment, but I haven't exercised it. I've used the pandemic as an excuse. 
I have concealed myself. I've siloed myself. I haven't been intentional about being connected. I've been waiting for someone to connect with me, but I haven't been intentional. If that's you today, God is saying, just like the Power Rangers, when they rejected Zordon, God is saying, you know what? I have not retracted the call that I have on your life. He has not removed the call that he has on your life. He has not regretted the call that he has on your life. He is here with open arms. And we at I-5, and I stand uh, 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 in, in place of Pastor Jimmy and Irene, representing them and saying, we are here with open arms. We want you here. We need you here. We want you to be connected. We want you to be a partner. Why? Because we want to be able to be a part of God activating the call of God on your life. We want you to be connected here. There's an opportunity for you. We have next class. If you haven't committed, if you haven't taken that step, here's the first step. We have next class here, an opportunity for you to become a partner at I-5. Why become a partner? Not because it gives you access to some membership. It gives you an opportunity to be a contributor to the vision. It gives you an opportunity to be a part of, 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 of this vision of of impacting people to, the, to a point where they would become impactors themselves. So we want you to sign up. We want you to go online and sign up for next class, the first and second Sunday of every month. So we want you in the month of November, December, whatever month it is, we want you to become partners. We want you to join us, be connected with us, not because we're the same, not because we look alike, because we think alike, but because we have a common call. So I want to pray for you, God. I pray for those right now, God, who are listening to this message and they are convicted. They have been confronted with your word and they have been humbled. And now they want to make, a, they want to take a step towards living out the heart and soul of I-5. And I pray, God, that you would lead them and guide them, Lord God, as they take this commitment, as they go to next class, as they begin to sign up to serve. I pray, God, that they would be uh, 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 empowered by the compassionate heart that you place in them, God. That that compassion will be met with commitment. That commitment will be exercised and facilitated in the context of being connected to a team. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I also want to Speak to a group of people who may be watching and you may not have a relationship with Jesus, which is the beginning. I said in the beginning, we have to be commissioned by God. We have to be close enough to hear from God and respond to God. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that means you haven't accepted that Jesus is your savior. Savior, that doesn't mean that he is saving you from some of your life's troubles. That's not what salvation is. It doesn't mean he's saving you from some boogeyman or some, some evil power that is threatening to overtake you. No, he is giving you an opportunity to be in right standing with God, your creator. You want to know what your purpose is. You want to be connected. You want to be, to be connected to the, your, your, your reason for being here, your calling in your life. You have to be connected to the one that created you. It's that simple. The Bible says that anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. Behold, all things have new. Old things have passed away. Whatever you have done, whatever you think disqualifies you, it doesn't matter to Jesus. So what we want you to do right now is we want you in the comment section to type I-5 new me to 97000 and somebody's going to reach out to you, pray with you and start you out on this journey. Can I pray with you right now? God, I thank you, God, for all those who have given their lives to you today. We know that all of heaven is rejoicing and we, the church, the body of Christ, we are rejoicing with them, God. We pray, God, that as they take this step to, being, to, to, to salvation and being connected to you, God, that you would lead them on their journey of being connected and being uh, active participants in your call for us to serve others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you all so much and we can't wait to see you next week. So stay tuned for some more. Uh, uh, some videos that'll show you some next steps and some things for you to know moving forward. See you next week.